In this video, we're going to look at the very powerful Revolve modeling technique. So I'm going to show you how to create the sketch and how to create the Revolve. I am using the latest stable release, 0.19. It is the Git revision number 24276. And it's the latest one that you can download as a stable release. I will be moving to the um, development release of 0 0.20 when it's had a chance to be um, differentiated and some of the improvements have been put in it. But for now, I'm working on the stable release. As this is a beginner session, what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain where I am right now. So I'm obviously I've opened FreeCAD. I'm in the part design workbench. And what I'm about to do is create a new file. And I'm going to save that file. I'm going to call it Revolve. And I'm going to create a new part in that file. And then I'm going to create a new body in that file. And then I'm going to create a new sketch in that file. Now for this one, I'm not going to do it on the XY plane because I want my piece to be standing up. So I'm going to do it on the XZ plane. So again, I can select it from here. Or I can go over here and select it. And I just hit OK. And we'll get started. Now, when I create any model, what I typically do is I rough out the shape. So that's what I'm going to do in this case. And as we're doing a revolve, the revolve is perfect, as the name suggests, for creating things that are round with complex geometry. So let's start a revolve here. I'm going to just use the... Um, polyline tool so that I can create my shape. I'm going to go this way. I'm going to go this way. I think I'll come straight down. Then I'm going to take a endpoint arc. Click that point. Come down to about here. Make my art look something like that. I'm going to go back to my polyline, select that point, and I'm going to bring this point here, and then I'm going to go to the middle. And finally, I'm going to go back up to the top and close my line. Zoom in there a little bit so you can see it. Then a right click just to end that line. And then I'm going to close it. Notice I have not constrained anything. So what I usually do is I want to see what the shape is going to look like. So I don't constrain it immediately. I want to see does that look something like what I was hoping for. So here it goes. We're going to go to the task and we're going to pick revolution. And there's the revolution here. So revolve a sketch or revolution down here. So they're actually called different things. One says revolve a sketch. The other one says revolution. It's exactly the same thing. So we're going to pick, I'll pick this one up here. When we do that, what it's going to do is it's going to revolve that sketch around that center point. Now, sometimes if it, if it revolves itself inside out, um, you may have to use these buttons to change the revolution. The other thing that you may need to do, depending on whether you want a full circle, which I do in this case, but you can lessen the angle. So if I reduce that angle, you can see my revolve now is only going, um, is only going 280 degrees as opposed to going the full 360. 
Now I want a 360, so I'm going to leave that alone. And I'm going to say OK. So now I can see my shape and I can look at it and say, well, that's not quite what I wanted. I think I'm a little thick up here. I think this could come up a little bit. So we're going to go back into the sketch. And remember to find your sketch. I'm going to go back where it was to find my sketch. So I'm in this view. And I hit the model tab. Now I can see my model tree. So in my model tree, I can see my part, my body. If I use this little drop down guy here, now I can see the revolution. Drop that down. There's my sketch hiding under there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click that sketch. Again, my model disappears. I go back to this. Now, because I haven't constrained anything, I can still move all these lines. So I can actually just move it around to where I want it to be. I think I want it more sort of a, what we call in England, a vase what they call here in America, a vase. So I'm doing just a vase type of shape. And I just want to do that just to sort of give me the, the shape that I want. So now if I close that, you can see immediately that it recreated the shape. And that's more or less what I want. So now let me ponder this question. I have a vase that is filled in. And I want to be able to put my flowers in it. Well, how would I do that? How would I do that? What's the best way? I guess I could draw a sketch in the top here and do a pocket and that would make a hole. But the problem with that is it would be a straight down hole and I'd have really thick sides. So in a revolution, we can change the way that the revolution creates those sides. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take another polyline and I'm going to hit this line, drop down here. And I'm just doing this roughly because later on we're going to constrain the sketch and we'll tell it exactly where we want these pieces to be. But for now... I'm just doing a rough example of what I want. And we can take a look at that and see if it's more or less what I want. So now what I need to do is I'm going to use the trim tool. I'm going to trim this line. I'm going to trim this line. Didn't like that. Must have selected the wrong line. I cannot trim it with the given index. So what I'm going to do easier than that, we'll just delete that line. And we'll put in a new line. Between here and here. The one thing with the revolve is you have to have a closed edge in this case. If I leave that open, I don't believe that will work. So let me just delete that. Show you what I mean. So what happened was it created the revolution. But if you look here, it says failed to validate broken face. So we're going to go back into our sketch. We'll just take a regular line between those two points. Now we should have a closed face. So see. Our revolution is good again. So although we had a revolution that you could see, it wasn't correct. So I want you to close that face. So now I've closed that face. If you look here, I have a hole the way through. And in my hole, it follows this profile. Now I'm going to show you how we can take a look at that profile and see that that profile does indeed follow the shape. So one of the tools I use to just check a model to have a look through is the clipping planes. So you can find those clipping planes um, under the view 
menu and it says clipping plane you just click on that and now I can pick where I want the clipping plane to be so if I look here if I'm looking up at this part here I can see the X direction is here the Y direction is here the Z direction is here so I'm going to use my clipping plane on the X and you can see it actually cut the thing in half now I didn't actually change the model I'm just changing the view so the clipping plane is how it views the model so now I can see my model and it does look a bit freaky when I go <laughs> back and forth like that but I can see the model is is cut through here and I can see I have a thick bottom on that model and I what I can do is I can modify the clipping plane so I can move that down now let me look further into the model and although this shows it empty in there if you actually 3d printed that that would be a solid wall and I can turn that clipping plane off and I can also look at the clipping plane from the Z standpoint and you can hit this flip button and it'll cut the top off and now I can see that part and if I increase that I can take a look all the way down Just move it back in the middle and then I can go all the way back up and again I'm not changing the model I'm just looking at the view I'm changing the way I view this model so hopefully that will help you in in examining your models uh, once you're done with the clipping planes you can just close that turn them all off everything looks good now I'm going to go back to my sketch I'm going to take a look at this here I have a very thick bottom so I think I need to do something about fixing that so we're going to we're going to do that when we do our constraints. So as with all models, we want to con fully constrain this model. Otherwise, weird things can happen. So you can see you can actually create the model without constraining it, but you don't want to leave it that way. And of course, our sketch is just that sectional profile. So when we use the clipping planes to look through the model, we were just seeing this profile, but it was doubled up because this has been revolved around this axis. So it is revolved around the Y axis. So let's take a look at constraining this model. So the first thing we might want to consider is, should we have a consistent thickness through here? And I would say that's probably a good idea if you're going to be 3D printing it. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to fix a few things. If you look here, I have a, I have a radius and then I have a tangent and then a flat. But here I just have a flat part. So I probably need to, to delete this line, move this guy back up to here somewhere in a tangential line and then take that line over to here and now we should be able to trim that little guy yep and then I want to make this one vertical and remember what I usually do is I will um, constrain geometry first and then constrain dimensions so that's what I'm looking to do right now uh, I do want to say that this has to be coincident upon this so I can say that with this uh, I do not love that there we go I used the wrong constraint I used the this is two vertices two points and this is a point and a, and a line so point to an object so I want to make sure that, that stays in the middle there because if it doesn't and it's overhanging here when it does a revolve that's going to cut into itself and it, it won't, the model won't like that okay and so from here I can just move these vertices around vertices or points around and then I can look at 
how to constrain this thing. So as always, when you're doing constraints, just take it a little bit at a time. So we're going to constrain this dimension here, because I think we have a lot of geometry done the way we want it. I'm going to make a five mil wall. I think that'll be good. And we are going to constrain these radii. What I want to do is I want to constrain that center point. So I'm going to take a point from this guy up to here and give him a center. We can call it 38. I'm just rounding up the dimensions. And what I also want to do is I want to zoom in here and make this point and this point coincident. So now the two radii share the same center. So they'll make them um, off. They'll make the offset better. So now we want to do a radial dimension. We'll call that 24. And we can do a radial dimension for this guy. And we'll call that 29 because we're going with a 5 mil wall. And we need to constrain the center points this way. Okay, so we are looking good now. We want to constrain this dimension. That's going to be 5. And we have to decide, do we want this to be 5, or do we want the horizontal part to be 5? <clears throat> From a constraint standpoint, we're, we're going to have a slightly different dimension if we have that horizontal part as 5. Uh, we can go ahead and do that, I think. So we'll do that. And we already know that this guy is five. And we need to figure out where these things are floating in the air right now. So let's take a look. We have nine degrees of freedom. So this guy needs to have a dimension. We can take him from the center point. and give him whatever it comes out to. I don't have any real strict dimensions here. I'm just going with as I've drawn it, basically. And then, so something that might be important if we're thinking about this, so the outside lip might be important because you might have a limitation on the outside size, but also this inside size. So we might want to dimension between those two points so that we know how big our neck is going to be. Um, we'll say OK to that. A little trouble selecting things with this big red pointer on there because it doesn't always grab what I'm pointing at. It's a little bit, <clears throat> a little bit offset. OK, one thing that we probably want to do is make this guy and this guy parallel. This is the parallel constraint. There we go. And we probably need to dimension from the base here. We're going to dimension up to here. That's our overall height. And we want a dimension from the origin to the bottom because I didn't put it on the origin. Doesn't really matter. Um, could be easier to put it on the origin. Maybe not. Just depends. Okay, now we can see if you look here, you see how that line has changed color. That means we've got that line pretty much constrained now. So I don't need to worry about that so much. 
but I do need to lock in where these parts are. And I think this line and this line should also be parallel. That will help. And then we can go with this line or this point to this point, put a dimension in. Now we just have two degrees of freedom. Now, if you want to see what your two degrees of freedom are, you can click on this two degrees of freedom and it'll show you where you're lacking some dimensions. Now it's a little bit cryptic sometimes because I do have a dimension for that guy. So what is it telling me? Well, it's telling me that it doesn't know where this point is and it doesn't know where this point is and it doesn't know where this point is so it's trying to explain that we still have some movement now you can test that movement too if you take hold of this and you start pulling it around you can see if you can move those points move those lines so i'm not seeing a whole lot of movement in it what we're going to do is we got to figure out what it is we need to constrain to get to zero degrees of freedom. So I am thinking we have that one constrained there. Again, there's a point that moves right there. So somehow we have to get that point. And one of the things, if you look here, this one has tangency and this one does not. So we're going to make that tangent. And there's our tangent guy right there. Okay. And now we're looking close. We have one degree of freedom. And it's up there. And it looks like we have not dimensioned. So let's go have a look at that point. It says we have one degree of freedom. We have not dimensioned the height to that lip. So let's do that. Now another thing I want to show you again is you see I rotated my sketch accidentally. So what we want to do is we want to go up here to this guy. It looks like the new sketch icon, but it's not the new sketch icon. It's uh, when in edit mode, set the camera orientation perpendicular to the sketch plane. So I click that. So that's a long way of saying just straighten everything back up. So what we're going to do is we are going to create a dimension. We already have a dimension from here to here. So we're going to create a dimension from it makes sense to do it from the base here up to there. Oh, another thing, when you look at where your degrees of freedom are, you see how they went green? It's actually pre-selected though, so the problem I have now is I'm going to dimension and it's going to yell at me because I've got too many things selected. So I'm just going to left click away from everything and I reselect it. So I'm going to select this point and this point and give that a dimension. And it's done. So now you can see that's a fairly complex shape to fully constrain. But all we did is work through it just systematically to get to where we wanted to go. Now we have a fully constrained sketch. You can close this. And we have a fully constrained vase or vase. And we've already looked at the uh, sectional view of it before so let's take another look at the sectional view now i've made everything um, consistently five mil thick so again we go to view clipping plane we're going to choose the x and there it's clipped so you can see the clipping and now i can see it looks much more consistent and what I'm looking at is the difference between this edge, this edge, this part, these parts, around these parts. 
So I'm looking to see, do I have a consistent wall thickness? And I do. And so if I 3D print this, of course, when you're 3D printing, you can 3D print. If you're printing up in an arc, it'll print that quite well. Um, so you would actually get this complete shape. And I wasn't really worried about um, what my uh, final dimensions would be. So I didn't, I didn't spend a lot of time worrying about how tall it was, how wide it was, and all that good stuff. So um, as far as the vase is concerned, I'm not planning to actually print this thing out. It'll take forever, I think. Um, so that is a revolution, and that is how you create one. That is how you constrain one, and that is the shape that we want. Now, why would we create a revolution instead of creating something like this? I'm going to go to my part, make my part active. I'm going to create a new body, and I'm going to go back to that original body, hit spacebar, and that will turn off that model. Then in this body, I am going to create a new sketch. I'm going to create it on the XY plane. I'm going to take a circle. I'm not going to constrain it because I'm just demonstrating the model here. But of course, I would constrain it if I was keeping it. I'm going to pad that. Let's pad it 80 millimeters or something and say OK. So now if we look, I have essentially what you can create with a revolve. So if I turn back on my original body, you see I've created um, I've created a round thing using a revolve and I've created a round thing using a pad. So why would I use one over the other? Well, to be honest with you, if it was something as simple as this that doesn't have any features along the sides of it, I might do it as a pad. I might not bother with a revolve. But if you have a body that has this type of shape, has a lot of shapes around it, to do that from a pad is going to be quite complicated. And it's very simple to do with a revolve. So that's why you would use the revolve is if you have a complex um, shape that runs along your cylinder, which essentially all revolves are a cylinder of some kind. Um, so if I just had, let's say, here's something else. So if I just had an undercut to do on this guy, I could easily just Take this again, do an X, Y plane. Now, remember when your model disappears like that, you can go back to your model tab, back to that body. I just clicked on the down arrow. Go back to um, this model. I'm going to hit my part because actually it's the part that got turned off and hit space and it brings it back on. Now I'm going to do, I'm just going to draw another circle here. So I'm going to use this sectional view again. We used that before. So in edit mode, if we click this, it'll go into a sectional view so I can see my center point. I click that center point. And that's about where I want my undercut to be. So again, I'm not going to constrain it. But if I was using this as a model, if I was going to end up with a model, I would constrain it. So now what we have, I've drawn that sketch and it's sitting right at the bottom. So now if I wanted it to be an undercut, let's say somewhere up here in the middle, I can go to that sketch, go to its attachment, to its position, and I can move it up. Let's say I want it to be 10 mil up. And I can say, OK. And then I actually should I should do a second circle in this sketch. I'm going to do that because we want to take a piece out. So I need to have a piece that's bigger than that. So I'm going to say close. Now you can see where my sketch is. 
then I'm going to say pocket and there you have a five mil undercut kind of like the back of a bullet so you can you can create some shapes this way by doing sketches but if we wanted to create that as a revolve here's how we would do that so I'm going to go with a new body I'm going to create a new body so I can sketch a new body I'm going to create just this shape in a revolve so let's go ahead and we will turn off the original in this body we're going to create a sketch we'll do it once more we don't want to do it in the XY plane we're going to do it in the XZ plane say OK we will send like that and it's literally this easy so from a revolve perspective we go from that point come out to this point down do draw my undercut and remember just to close that say close revolve bring it in the middle so I can see it and there you can see I have basically that shape and I've created that shape with one sketch one revolve and I can similarly I can uh, go in and constrain that sketch and have that be exactly what I want it to be so you can see that the revolve is a very powerful way to produce the same thing well hopefully you've enjoyed this video hopefully it's helped you to get to grips with the revolve and how easy it is and how powerful it is and what you can do with it um, I would appreciate it if you've enjoyed it if you give the video a thumbs up and you would give uh, us a subscribe if you haven't already subscribed and we've just created a patreon account so I know some people have asked how they can help the channel and if you want to do that I would uh, be very appreciative you can join us on patreon and I will put the uh, the link somewhere in this area is not there right now when I'm talking but I will add it in the video so you'll have the link to the patreon and it's also in the comments below thanks I do want to say thank you to Daniel Dudley for becoming our first patreon and uh, I appreciate his willingness to support us and to um, give us the opportunity to uh, create more videos thanks